Hi, this is Mark from Brown Works, and we've been making, uh, we've made a couple snakeskin grips over the last month or so, and I figure I want to do a short video to tell you how we make our snakeskin grips. Uh, there's several uh, companies out there, several people out there that make uh, snakeskin covered grips, and it seems like they all have a slightly different process. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit of how we make ours and our process that we go through. It, uh, it is, um, it is, uh, takes a lot of work. Um, so I'm going to go through what we actually do to make these, um, grips. Okay, so we first start off with we um, we buy our snake skins uh, from a tanner. Uh, so these are tanned, uh, genuine rattlesnake uh, skins, and we get them. Um, it's kind of mix and match of what we get sometimes. The skins are more brown. Some of them are more grayish. Um, it just depends on what they have in stock. Um, so we try to get a couple different types and have, we have a couple of them that, that are on our shelf so that we can make grips by request. Um, it is, like I said, it is labor intensive. Uh, when I do make a set, sometimes I'll make a second set and you may see those on our website um, but if you want a specific set uh, please contact us via our website and we'd be glad to help you so what we do to start out with we have the snake skins uh, sometimes these um, come in different different lengths and different widths we try to match up what what grips we have are they uh, thin grips are they thicker grips and try to get some skins that's going to uh, best match the grips uh, we'll lay lay the grips out uh, so that we get a good pattern covering the grip and then we'll cut uh, pieces of the uh, snake skin for those um, individual grips then after we have the individual pieces then to prep the skin, we uh, first um, wash the backside with soap and water to get the tanning oils um, off. We want to make sure it's nice and clean um, because uh, when we laminate, we want to make sure that the contact cement, uh, which we use a very, uh, very strong cement, uh, we want to make sure that it adheres and stays on uh, the skin. So we need to make sure all the, those oils are off of here. Um, regular, uh, some, some soap and water takes out. Usually that works the best. So we'll wash that. We'll let that dry, usually overnight. Um, it does stiffen the, uh, the skin up a little bit. Um, and we try not to wash the backside. We just want to, uh, to give it still so it has a little bit of pliability. Then we take the individual pieces and we um, use our, our contact cement and we uh, put these into a press. Um, so after they're positioned, we put them into a press and they'll stay in the press overnight until the uh, contact cement has set uh, and they're not going to move around after we take them out uh, the next night then we'll trim trim off uh, any excess uh, skin that we have um, and sometimes it's very tedious to make sure once we get down to um, lining them up, making sure that we get into all the crevices, 
uh, and curves of the grip. So some grips are a little bit more complicated than others. Um, so, and some take a little bit longer time-wise uh, to deal with. After we do that, then we go back with some more soap and water on the front side, the scale side, and uh, we try to be as vigorous as we can to knock loose any loose scales um, because e these scales do flake off sometimes. So we'll wash the, the top of it off uh, to get any oils off the top and also any loose scales. Um, then we'll high pressure, high, high, um, high air pressure, we'll blow those clean. Again, trying to blow off any uh, loose scales. We'll let that dry, uh, usually overnight. Then the next day we'll come back with some tape, uh, like masking tape or something to that effect, and try to peel off, again, sticking it on and peeling off to s just to make sure um, we get any, any loose uh, pieces off of the top of the skin. Uh, again, we try to be as vigorous as we can um, so that it doesn't fall apart in your hands once you get your uh, grips on your firearm. So after that point, um, then we put a, uh, two coats of polyurethane uh, on top. And then what we'll do is after that dries, uh, we'll come back with some fine uh, sandpaper, 400 grit or, or higher, to knock down any high pieces of any of the scales. Sometimes a uh, little point of the scale will uh, poke up. So we want to knock that down flat. We, you still have the texture of the scales, but we're just knocking off those high points. And then we clean, clean off any um, of the dust debris at that point. Uh, we'll go back through the seams of the grip where we've laminated the skin on them. And sometimes if we need to go through and uh, put a bead of uh, uh, CA, uh, CA glue uh, around the seam just to ensure nothing pops up um, and then, then sand that down uh, fine um, just so that we make sure that these aren't going anywhere. After that, then we put another coat of polyurethane on top, and then they're ready to go after that is dried. So that's our process of how we make our uh, genuine rattlesnake skin grips. So if you want to find out more about some of our products, releases of our grips, please subscribe to our channel. And I thank you for watching, so bye for now.